Dear Mario, my castle has been taken to the artist's studio. Please come save me. Yours truly, Peach. Thank you once again to my patrons. If you want to see more builds like this and follow along with my journey as an artist and content creator, join my Patreon to get weekly vlog check-ins where I'll be answering all your burning questions and discussing future content for the main channel. Welcome back. <clears throat> Welcome back to the Artist Studio. I'm your artist and host, Dylan. On today's episode, we're going to be putting together this castle from the Mushroom Kingdom. More accurately, I designed this version of Peach's castle in SketchUp using the original castle from the Mario series as a reference. I specifically like the design from the original Paper Mario series. I like the way the turrets cheek out and the slanted walls give the building a bulbous shape that feels active and animated. To start, you'll need to form the foundation using these two pieces. This part won't be visible in the build, so it's not important that it's perfect, it's just important that the printed parts do not overlap. Next, assemble the foundation walls. To keep the Paper Mario aesthetic, I designed the model using 4mm thick cardboard and used textures from the Thousand Year Door. I planned the entire build digitally so I could print the textures out and wouldn't require any paint to finish the sculpture. If you'd like to build your own and follow along at home, you can head to the artist's Patreon page and download the PDF file for free. I recommend printing the files at full 100% scale on 65 pound cardstock. The PDF I've created does not have any instructions on it, so it's going to be a challenge regardless, though the final build will be worth all of the effort. Try and pay close attention to the perforated lines that delineate the folded corners. Also the textures themselves have directionality. Be sure that the drop shadows in the design are facing downward. In this early part of the build, I started working with individual printouts from the PDF and mounted these parts as I put it together. To mount the parts, I use Elmer's Extreme Glue Sticks. To the extreme. I'm surprisingly impressed with this glue. More often when I'm using glue sticks, I'm not confident in the parts staying together. With this glue, I'm not able to remove the glued paper without tearing it, which tells me the glue is being properly absorbed into the paper fibers before drying. I'll definitely be keeping a couple of these in the studio at all times. Once my parts were mounted and cut out, I then scored each fold mark to form the walls to the foundation. For every fold line, I lightly ran the knife over the line to score it. This will create a designated break line for the cardstock to fold along. Then on the reverse side of the cardboard, I cut through the first layer of paper and the corrugated paper inside. These cuts are very important. Without cutting the corrugated paper, the mounted cardstock will be stretched when you try to make the fold. With the folds made, it's time to glue together our first pieces. I started using this gel super glue from Gorilla, that is probably my new favorite super glue. Later in the build, I ran out and had to switch to standard super glue, but if you have the opportunity, get the gel. The gel just isn't liquid, and it's not like any other super glue I've ever had. When attaching these foundation walls, use the light gray border as a guide to glue the edge of the cardboard directly to. After these are assembled, all other pieces will begin adding to these parts. Like these culverts and doors.
Next up is the castle's ground floor and entrance. Mount and cut the cardboard to size, then cut away the sides of this stone path texture at the top. This will be folded up to form the set of stairs visible through the front door. Remove the center octagon and cut out the star for use later. Then back the bottom of the new hole using the stone textured octagon and reinforce this piece underneath. With the ground floor in place, it's time to work on the landscaping around the castle. I designed the model to include parts of the moat as well as some landscaped features often included in different iterations of the Mushroom Kingdom castle. For this part, you'll need to mount and ready all the grass, dirt, and gravel pieces. These elements should all be unique, so if you're ever confused on the part's location, try and match the textures to the ones in the video to find where the piece is located. Starting on the left side of the castle, we'll build up the side yard using this grass piece with the stone tooth. It should fit snugly together between the foundation walls. Then to the top of that piece goes this grass piece. These parts do not overlap the edge of the foundation wall. Keep all stacked pieces aligned to each other. Next, we're going to need these stone detail pieces to help keep some other parts in place. It's at this point when I decided to just prep every piece for the model, which was certainly the hardest part in the entire build.
Alright, so using these stone pieces, we're going to cap the edges around the castle. Careful to keep them straight and level. I failed to keep the leftmost piece level, and I had to adjust it later. You'll also have this extra piece, which is actually the backside of the leftmost stones. So I'll be sure to fix that up when I actually notice it. For now, we'll add the backyard and fountain. To help make this piece, you can use the stones as a guide and stack these three pieces together. The fountain is made by cutting out the stone octagon piece and removing the corrugated cardboard from these flaps. Once squared on the top, you'll be able to fold these flaps down to form the fountain's ledge. Remove the small octagon in the center of the water and keep it aside to form the plinth for the star you saved earlier. Be sure to add the reverse side of the star before gluing it in place. With the stones glued on the sides of the yard, this part can then be slotted into place. Here's where I fixed those stones. I didn't realize it was so crooked, so luckily any mistakes with this build kind of add to the character of the model. The moat is formed by these fragmented stone parts, and the ledges are capped with the corresponding dirt sides. For the design of the model, I really thought about the look of the surrounding landscape, and how I could design the castle as though it were plucked from the Paper Mario universe. This led me to design the moat as though the ground was fractured, with elements like the bridge and floating island alluding to the world beyond the one I'm building.
A lot of these parts are referential to the ones already added. More often, the dirt parts will be matched up to the grass or gravel parts. Though, if you're ever completely lost, try to build the landscape part that you guarantee are matches. Then, custom build the parts that may no longer fit due to tolerances or any other issue. For myself, I had some trouble along the backside near the cave section here. In this case, I improvised part of the build until I was happy with how it was shaped. So, not entirely the same as the digital model, but close enough. With the landscape done, we can move on to the bridge in Floating Island. To make the railing for the bridge, I cut out the small squares between the balusters. Now let's get building this castle. To start elevating these walls, we'll need to first add the inner walls that keep the outer walls upright. Take these two stone walls and form the stair railing using the diagonal cuts. Glue them in place following the stone pattern on the ground. Next, add the front wall of the castle, keeping the door centered to the path. With that wall securely in place, the slant will provide a sheer strength to the remaining outer walls, so you can glue them in place as well. To form the vestibule, you'll need to fold these two stone pieces like so. Don't worry too much about the visible seams, as it'll get covered by the school trim. Next, we'll add the square rooms attached to the corners of the castle. Each one is made from a four-sided stone wall. The taller ones with the windows will be for the front. To create the castle battlements, you'll take the largest stone detailed pieces and make these prisms from these notched stone slabs. Cap off the square rooms with the battlements and secure them in place with more glue. To form the turret towers, score and fold these stone walls to make them tempered tubes. I also cut out circular pieces to help hold the tower's shape. Before gluing the towers, place in the second floor and add the gold trim around the edges.
this stone slab will give you a guide for the next part in the build. But first, let's return to the turrets for a moment and add the roofs to them. To the top edge of each tower, add a stone crown and form the red roofs into funnels, gluing them in place and finishing off the detailing with a bit of gold trim. You can then glue each tower in place by fitting the castle into the T-shaped relief cuts on the turrets. Next up, we'll make the main roof of the castle using the remaining red quadrilaterals. Identify the windows with the larger margins surrounding it, and use those parts as the front facing pieces. Now let's give this castle some height by creating that center tower. For this element, we'll construct separately and attach to the castle once done. Start by making the rounded tower, which has this H-shaped part as the base. If you're having trouble sticking these parts together, use some tape on the inside to hold while your glue dries. The insides of the castle aren't visible, so it's okay to use reinforcements wherever you need it. The tower connects back to this other roof element that acts as a terrace. To the top of the tower, we'll make another stone crown. This time starting with the gold trim to give us a bit more to build off of. Craft the roof by affixing these two parts together and set aside the final small roof piece, which will be used later when we add our flags. Attach the final tower piece to the castle, filling in the open spaces left in the roof. With that, the overall construction of the castle is complete. All that's left are the details. For my windows, I originally included blue glass pieces, but I later ditched them in favor of using tracing paper, so the openings in my windows would be slightly translucent.
I decided not to glue these windows in place. I want to rebuild them in the future to include some kind of lighting element, which may require me to redesign these parts entirely. Not to mention the deformation that occurred trying to squeeze the windows into their places. Once again, I think it kind of adds to the paper aesthetic, so until I'm ready to add lights, I think I'm happy with the weird crafted look. Lastly, let's bring this place to life with a bit of greenery and some paper figurines for scale. Oh, and I almost forgot the flags. To make these, I just used some wooden dowels, a few beads, and red construction paper. And with that, the castle is complete. Oh look, Mario made it. I wonder if he'll get to save the princess. Here we go! This build took me way longer than any of my other builds so far. So many little things were setting me back, like running out of glue several times and needing to reprint due to mistakes and lost parts. If I had to guess, I'd say over 200 hours went into this whole project. From designing the initial model in SketchUp to placing the final flag, over a month has gone into putting this castle together. It has been quite the journey to the Mushroom Kingdom, but I'm so happy to have had your company along the way. If you have any ideas for future builds in the Mushroom Kingdom, or any other video game universes I should venture to, let me know in the comments below. I'm going to be working on some drawing tutorials for the next couple weeks, and will be followed up with a series of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure builds, and you won't want to miss any of those. So get subscribed and hit that like button while you're here. It'll make me and that algorithm very happy. So until next time, go get crafty.